Davy Crockett died in Texas defending the Alamo from Mexican troops. Thanks largely to this 1955 Disney movie, most Americans believe the king of the wild frontier went down swinging, wearing his signature coonskin cap, holding his rifle old Betsy by the barrel and bashing the enemy soldiers until he was finally killed. Their spirits will live and their legends grow as long as we remember the Alamo. Davy, Davy Crockett, fighting for liberty. But now a recently discovered memoir written by a Mexican soldier who fought at the Alamo is up for auction and it tells a very different story. Gregory Shaw is with the auction house Butterfield and Butterfield. Good morning, Gregory. Good morning. What does this memoir tell us about how Davy Crockett died? Well, although it's a 700-page uh, manuscript, there's actually one page about David Crockett which suggests, well, says quite clearly that he was not killed, but rather captured at the end of the fight and was executed. This is written by a lieutenant colonel uh, named Enrique de la Peña. What can you tell Correct. us about him? Well, he was a, he was a soldier uh, under... Uh, uh, President Santa Ana, and um, he uh, followed through the whole Texas campaign. He was a very elo eloquent writer and wrote the most compelling account that I've ever seen of a, of a battle campaign. You said just one page of the 700 pages of this memoir is, talks about Davy Crockett, and yet how much could this document go for? The estimate on this is two to three hundred thousand dollars, and we feel that's conservative. Let us pause for just a moment, Gregory, and introduce you now to Stephen. Hardin, who's a Texas historian from Victoria College. Stephen, good morning to you. Good morning. What can you tell us about this? This is not the first account. The first suggestion is it that David Crockett did not was it wasn't executed. In other words, this is not the first time we've heard this. No. In fact, uh, there are uh, several Mexican sources that corroborate what Della Pena says uh, in regard to Crockett being executed. So this is this is not the only source that says that. But nevertheless, when this was translated into English in 1975, it created a firestorm of controversy. What happened? Well, that clip that you showed at the beginning of the segment is what happened. Uh, I'm 45. I'm part of that Davy Crockett generation. You had a Davy Crockett coonskin hat. Uh, I did. I did <laughs> indeed. Uh, the whole outfit, uh, as thousands of others uh, my age did. And uh, this image became icon to people in my generation. And when you suggest that Davy might not have uh, gone down swinging, that, that upsets some people. That challenges just not their image of Crockett, but it challenges their childhood innocence as well. Well, you're now a historian. Yes. So what do you say about this? Do you think that this might be an authentic? Do you believe it is an authentic? I believe it is, yes. Do you think it should be tested? Yes, I do. Why? Well, because doubting Thomas as the patron saint of historians. Uh, there are some problems with this document. We don't have a, a clear sense of provenance on it. That is to say, we don't have a paper trail. Uh, we, we simply don't know where this was from, I'll say, 1840 to 1955. That has to bother us. Also, uh, there are portions of this uh, account that seem derivative of other accounts. That, that gives us pause. Uh, now, I I believe in my heart of hearts that it's accurate, but I'm frequently wrong. Uh, my wife tells me that all the time. Now, now, you don't think you're going to test it, is that right, Gregory? Is that for sure? Well, uh, we're not going to test it in terms of destructive testing, no, because we are absolutely confident uh, of, of what time this, this manuscript was created. And one of the reasons is, the main reason is the paper. And the paper is a, is a high rag content laid paper, typical of the period, but there are watermarks throughout the paper and one of them actually has the name of the uh, manufacturer of the paper on it. A watermark is like a trademark. And the name is uh, Benedetto uh, Picardo. And with the help of the Huntington Library, we were able to establish that he was a paper maker in Lisbon, Portugal. And more than that, that it's a registered uh, watermark and that it was manufactured between 1825 and 1832. We know that for a fact. So you're pretty confident. Absolutely confident. Whether or not this is authentic or not, let me ask you this, Stephen. Do you think that uh, this changes our view of how much of a hero Davy Crockett was? Well, it shouldn't. Uh, do we think less of Nathan Hale because he was executed? Do we not have regard for uh, the people who perished in the Bataan Death March? Uh, yeah, Crockett's, Crockett's a hero. That's it. All right. Bottom, agreed? Bottom agreed. line. All right. Thank you both, Gregory Shaw and Stephen Harden, for joining us this morning. Thank you, ma'am.